It's one of the difficulties of censorship in Ireland is that very few books are actually published here or printed. And so it's very difficult for the authorities to prosecute the writers or the publishers. Of those that are published here, many tend to celebrate the Easter Rising of 1916, that most moving and well-remembered 20th century revolution. Or they deal with that other Irish obsession, the sporting life, the fish and the horse. And yet so Irish are the Irish that there are paradoxes. These two books, for example, you will not find on sale in Dublin because they are banned. Well, I brought them through with me on the plane. And at the customs, I could scarcely have shown them more prominently to the customs officer without knocking him out. He ignored them totally. On the monument in O'Connell Street to the Irish hero Parnell are engraved the words, No man has the right to say to his country, Thus far shalt thou go, and no further. When it comes to literature, that truth does not hold. Above O'Connell Street, I talked to the chairman of the Irish government's censorship of publications board, Judge Conroy. Is it very hard work uh, reading all these books and making these decisions? It was boring work. Very boring work. It's hard work, too. Well, why, why exactly is it boring? Aren't some of the books rewarding to read? Well, my experience is most of them are not. You will get an occasional good book, an interesting book worth reading. Maybe a book where you have to ban, but it's a pleasant book, a readable book. Well, you enjoy reading it and then you have to ban it? We may have to, yes. Well, why is it you know, enjoyable for you and not enjoyable for the people of Ireland? Well, it'll probably be enjoyable for them too, but unfortunately it may be indecent and obscene, or obscene. But Judge, how effective is your system of censorship? For example, when I came through the customs the other night, I carried two banned books very prominently, practically showed them to the customs officer, and nothing happened. Ah, no, there's bound in anything like this to be a trickle of books through like that. Uh, they aren't all as honest as you show them openly. Maybe the customs man was intelligent and knew who you were. Let's take particular cases, Judge. Let's take Edna O'Brien's novels. Now, is it true, as I've heard around Dublin, that they're banned because you don't like books about Ireland? Uh, that is a suggestion made by somebody who knows nothing about the censorship system or the way we work. We banned them because, in our opinion, they were indecent or obscene. Are you more insensitive to indecency here in Ireland? I wouldn't it. say so. If anything, the Irish character is a bit bawdy, including my own. Including your own? Including my own. <laughs> <laughs> I no, don't no. hold myself up as a prude. The Irish go to church more than any other people in the world. Maynooth is the world's larger seminary. Its attitudes have dominated and still dominate Irish life. But the religious orders, like the Jesuits, have often expressed views more liberal than the men of Maynooth. And one member of the Irish government's appeal board which can reconsider banned films is the Jesuit, Father John Kelly. To the visitor to Ireland, Father, it does seem to be quite a remarkable concern for the literary and theatrical and cinematic welfare of the people, a great deal of paternalism. Do you think that without this paternalism, the Irish would lose their heads? Yes. I, I almost expected the word paternalism from you, of course. Uh, and uh, 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 with all respect, paternalism is a dirty word. I, I, why not use the word fatherly? After all, we are responsible for one another. You know, we are our brother's keepers. And we must recognize that some of us have had advantages that others haven't and from the point of view of education and experience and training. And what we want to do is to try and bring people to this level. Now, this must be done gradually. If you shock people, if you frighten them by showing them some film for which they're, they're not prepared, uh, show them a, kind, a way of life that they, is to them very shocking, perhaps, uh, no matter how well it's treated, uh, you can frighten them so much that they will stop and never try to make progress towards uh, an ideal that uh, one sets for them, you see? But this attitude does predicate that the censor knows best. Well, yes, uh, censor or those who are concerned with censorship in one form or other. Uh, well, this is a responsibility that cannot be shirked. Uh, if one is chosen, one should be able to make the decision, am I a fit person to be able to make this kind of decision or not? And uh, one should be able to say, yes, I am. I, I think I can. I know the Irish people. I know film. I know human values and morality. So I am. 
Student life in Ireland has always been strictly controlled. The university climate is heavy with censorship. Speakers who might express a radical point of view have found themselves banned, but there are hints of change. What factors make for this change? I asked last year's president of University College's debating union, John Clare. I think it's increasingly difficult to censor uh, a large population. And in view of the fact that geographically we're so near to your own island, we, we get your television, we get your films, even if they are censored, we can still go over and see them. Now this, this is an important factor, and because the people are becoming more affluent, they are travelling more, and they're seeing outside their own island. That's one feature. Another important thing, I think, which must be stated, is that Ireland is a Catholic country, and the changes that have manifested themselves in Roman Catholicism have had a, a bearing on this. The church itself has got less censorship conscious. Still, the Thames, now as in the past, is more attractive than Dublin's Liffey to famous Irish writers like Edna O'Brien. Does it distress you very much that some of your fellow countrymen call your work obscene or indecent? No, I'm not always sensitive about it because all the censors and bishops and judges, they're all men. And the Irish man's attitude to sex is very strange. It's not really confined to me or, for that matter, to books. Somebody like Parnell, who devoted his life to, to their cause, the minute he became an adulterer, they put quicklime in his eyes and they killed him in one way or another. So I think one should just write away as well as possible, ignoring their problem, because it is their problem. I mean, they make very good soldiers, and I'm sure this is why they're so fanatically against sex, because they've channeled all their vigor and energy into sort of fighting and hitting. A taxi driver said to me here in London the other day, he said, why does an Irishman always pick a fight? It doesn't turn you against your fellow countrymen that they do ban your books and films? Um, no, it doesn't turn me against them, because for every person who would hate or resent a book of mine in Ireland, there's someone else who would probably be quite glad to read it. And in a way, I think why there are so many Irish writers and good ones in the past, they have sort of burst out of this climate where they're kept down. You know, maybe if one lived or was brought up in a free country, there wouldn't be the same urgency to write or to scream. What effect do you think the censorship system has on Irish life in general? I think it's totally stifling, as all censorship is, but especially there, because the country is so beautiful. To, to look in, look around, but after a month there, you know that you're starving for something, and you're starving for the sort of freedom that you can have in England, or for that matter, you can have even in Catholic countries, other Catholic countries. I'm sure in, in Italy, Roman writers having to run out of Rome and escape into Budapest or some other city. Would you yourself find it possible now to live and to write in Ireland? I'd find it possible to live, I suppose, if I suppressed at least nine-tenths of my nature. You know, if I wanted to live like a cow or a stone, I suppose I could live there very happily. I talked to citizens as they emerged from a purified Cleopatra. Do you object to censorship in the cinema in Ireland? Definitely not, no. I, uh, I feel quite strongly about this, actually. Uh, it's about time here in Ireland that a grading system was incorporated here in films. We have the Irish public poisoned. miss too many very good films through uh, our grading system. We're not as liberal as the British, who are, after all, like uh, not a Christian race, if one is to say that at the present day, or don't seem to be. Would you think the situation in Ireland is going to change? No, I, I, I wouldn't say that it will, it will radically change, because I, I, I don't think it would be a good thing if it did radically change. Uh, we, are, we are just coming out of the doldrums here from, from the economic point of view, and if we can keep up a steady, uh, a steady moral, uh, if there is no steady, if there is no moral decline in this country, I think we can go very far. Even Why is it you think the Irish? Uh, need censorship more than the English say? Uh. Definitely. Well, it's a Catholic country and we don't have the same moral, you know, same moral standards as the Do you English. mind very much that films are censored and books are censored? Uh, no, I don't mind very much. Well, yeah. Why do you think there is censorship in Ireland? Well, I don't really know. I think there's a lot of narrow-mindedness in it, mostly. Fighting my way out of one enormous crowd, I find myself in an even bigger one on Sunday morning. But. Censorship is not a question that exactly engages the passions of the Irish. Yet crowded churches don't mean that this will always be so, since within the Catholic Church there are new moves to raise the intellectual quality of the faith in Ireland. And this in itself might produce a new radicalism and new pressures on a censorship that, for all its apparent rigidity, has the saving Irish grace of leaving many avenues of escape.